Hey there everybody, Rev. Rick Broadman Baptist Church. This is the Broadman Word for December 23rd, 2020. And we're talking today about the uh, collision of grace and sin and how we might think about that. Broadman Word's uh, perspectives from the devotional New Morning Mercies by Paul David Tripp. And so here we go. Um, Jesus endured some serious worldly injustice. And he did it in his time of now so that we would be blessed with the divine mercy for all eternity. It was necessary for him to go through the violence and the injustice that he did so that we would have assurance of grace and salvation and eternity. It is possible uh, that the celebration of grace collided directly with the horror of sin and at the birth of baby Jesus. Let's read just a little bit out of the scripture. It says, Now, when the wise men had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious. And he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under. According to that the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. And that is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 18. So uh, the Christmas story then is not necessarily... Um, all celebrations, family gatherings, good food, uh, and joyous times. Uh, it was uh, the babe of the Most High, the one who came to be Lord of all, the one who came to deliver us. Um, he was in that manger. And it's amazing that he so willingly came here to this place of human injustice and violence and jealousy and greed and uh, envy and uh, political assertions, uh, money assertions, uh, all manner of ugliness and in, in human tragedy. But he came here anyway. <clears throat> and even more amazingly, uh, the wrath of God uh, no matter what Jesus had done, would eventually fall upon Jesus. That is the way that it had to be. So could you imagine the angst of being here, living uh, a perfect life and teaching, performing miracles, healing, and knowing that uh, at the end of this, uh, you're still going to be sacrificed. What an amazing level of love. Uh, what an amazing story of love. And not only that, of strength and power and commitment and understanding of the truth. The celebration for us now needs to be uh, about that. Um, he would, uh, Jesus, die a violent death at the hands of angry, sinful men. And uh, the followers of the day would weep um, and would see that the Messiah died, but they would also see that he rose. So I guess the point of this is, as we sit around eating uh, very rich food and uh, some of our favorites and enjoying time together, such as it is in our pandemic, and uh, enjoying beautiful trees and decorations and um, the love of gifts being um, sent to one another, when we're doing all that, um, we should not set aside, and we certainly shouldn't forget 
the horror of the violence um, at the both the beginning and the end of the Christmas story. The beginning of the Christmas story uh, is the slaughter of innocent children, mass slaughter, all male children two years old or younger. So the Christmas story begins with a mass slaughter of children and it ends with the violent murder of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, the Son of God is killed at the hands of uh, angry, uh, politically motivated, uh, financially motivated, and scared uh, men. So the slaughter depicts exactly how much the world needs grace. And the murder depicts the moment at which that grace was given. So uh, we need to not be so quick to leave the manger. We need to be able to look in on the manger and look in on the one uh, who came in perfect peace, but also the one who came to meet a violent end, the one who would die. Um, we should hear uh, in our hearts the angel singing and remember uh, that in order to achieve peace for all, there had to be a death. Death would be the only way that peace was achieved. And um, as horrible and as sad as it was, uh, it was an incredibly loving thing. Uh, the greatest act of love that has ever been shown to the world. So when you're looking at your tree, Remember another tree, one that did not have bright lights or decorations and certainly didn't have any presents in, underneath it. Um, it was a stained tree, stained with the blood of God, uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As you celebrate, and we should celebrate, we need to remember that the death uh, is part of our celebration. Uh, the fact that it happened and that he rose again, that God loved us enough to do that. What a horrific spectacle that had to be. Um, the wrath of God poured out on an innocent body so that all of us could then enjoy many, many, many Christmases. Uh, all mankind united under the cross uh, for all time at that point, only needing to come to profess that it happened and that they needed it to happen and that they um, want Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And that's it. What an amazing thing. What an amazing God we have. And what an amazing time this is. Let's not let the uh, trinkets of the world, the shininess of our trees or the um, joyous sounds of the music of the season uh, distract us from the very real um, violence that happened. Um, in fact, the collision of grace and sin and the need for it should be a part of what we're doing at this time of year. Hey, listen, I hope you're having a wonderful day. It is an amazing, marvelous day to be a Christian. And uh, what a day to be alive in the Lord. What a day to celebrate what was done for us um, at the beginning and the end of the life of Jesus Christ. Keep it in mind. Keep it in your heart and uh, speak that truth. I love you. Take care. We'll see you next time.